Well, the burnout is real for our teachers right now after two years working mm -hmm. through the pandemic. This morning, we're taking a 360 in-depth look at what they're dealing with, the struggles districts are facing to hire and keep teachers, the workarounds many districts are coming up with, what a local educator says needs to change, and how future teachers are being trained. We want to start with Denver 7's Veronica Acosta. Yeah, because teacher uh, staffing shortages are everywhere, but more prominent in rural mm -hmm. school districts. They are, and because of that, districts are using every single tool they have. We're talking J-1 visas, increasing those classroom sizes, of course, bumping pay, offering better benefits as well. But those are just a couple of the things the Morgan County School District is turning to to fill those teacher vacancies and the big thing, right? Avoid going back to remote learning. It's been difficult. I, I won't lie about that. It's not an easy time to be a school principal, but it's the job Jason Frasco loves and shows up to Monday through Friday. But in the past two years, dealing with teacher vacancies has been a top issue at the Morgan County School District at Fort Morgan Middle School. It's tough because uh, although we're a great community and strong community, we don't have a lot of offerings um, that the, the larger cities have uh, for our teachers you know, from the the social aspect, the social life, the those things that a lot of our, our young teachers are looking for, and so it is difficult. Fort Morgan is a rural community. Right now, the middle school is down just two teachers. At the start of the year, 13 had to be hired. In 2023 and 2019, five teachers. The pool is not very deep uh, in regards to applicants that we get from uh, from the community and from, from the state or across the United States. Across the district, the need was greater. There were 50 vacancies out of the 250 teaching positions at the beginning of the year. Brian Childress, the HR director, turned to multiple options to get those openings filled. That meant hiring J-1 visa teachers. Folks come in from other countries on a three-year visa uh, to work for us. Uh, that's been very successful. Bringing aboard those with alternative licenses. Second career people, people who um, are coming out of college but didn't necessarily pursue uh, education to begin with and are working through an alternative licensure program. And of course, increasing pay as much as the district could. We were able to increase base salary by $2,000. <laughs> It's working, but not terrific. But right now, a working system is all district officials can ask for. The hope? These incentives attract any and all teachers. Yeah, and Veronica, the district is considering another option, a four-day school week as an incentive. It is. It's something officials have spoken about, of course. It's not their first option, as you can imagine, but they plan to discuss this in a little bit more detail come June. District officials, they say, it comes down to getting a good quality teacher in front of students in that class, right? So if we're talking about a third grade, third grade classroom, getting them a great teacher four days a week, then that's what they would rather do and rather hmm. have here. Yeah, well, Morgan County wouldn't be alone in that. In fact, over 60% of Colorado school districts already have a four day week. Most of them are smaller rural districts. A notable exception is Brighton 27 J schools. It's one of the largest districts in the country that's on a four day week schedule. 27 J went to a four day week in 2018 specifically to attract and retain teachers. Students have every Monday off while teachers take one Monday each month for planning and professional development. But just offering that extra day off hasn't solved all of 27 J's problems. I sat down with Superintendent Chris Fiddler and asked if it comes down to money. He says yes, they've struggled with hiring largely because they can't pay as much as neighboring districts, which have passed mill levy overrides to increase their funding. Does it just come down to money? I don't think anybody becomes a teacher because they have, you know, uh, visions of Ferraris dancing in their head, right? Um, they, they choose to teach or drive a bus or work in our kitchens or clean our buildings um, out of a love for kids and, and, and purpose. But at some point that gap becomes so wide that even a, even a unique schedule uh, in terms of a four day week becomes a challenge to, to attract folks. And by the way, there is a stark difference in pay for teachers based on location. For some context, the starting salary for some rural districts is just $25,000 a year, which is tough to live on, especially in Colorado. Meanwhile, Denver Public Schools boasts about its high starting salary for teachers at nearly $46,000. We looked at job postings to see how that compares to other professions in Denver. Denver Health starts their paramedics at about $53,000. Denver firefighters start at more than $57,000 and Denver police recruits start at more than $58,000.
A couple of things to keep in mind when you're comparing the numbers though, teachers typically get about 13 weeks off a year and most teaching jobs require a degree. Hmm. Meanwhile, uh, it was just this week, a survey of Denver public school teachers showed many are exhausted by the workload and the daily challenges brought on by the pandemic. And a lot of them are thinking about quitting unless something changes. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon talked with a teacher in the district who says the results of that survey align with what he sees in the classroom and what he hears from colleagues. So here's what he thinks needs to change. Drive by the Denver Center for International Studies. This is my 16th year in the Denver Public Schools. You might miss the people with a passion. It's the only career that I feel like you really do touch the future. Facing challenges you can't study enough for. It hasn't been easy. This is Kevin Adams meeting us in a rare moment outside of school. There's never enough time in the day. Time spent lesson planning. How do we approach it? How do we message this to kids? Navigating the constant changes of the pandemic. It's much more than teachers. Like, we, we are psychologists, right? And meeting the social emotional needs of students. I have found notes at the end of my class on the floor that says I'm thinking about killing myself. All reasons, he says, separate teachers from other careers. People do teaching for the love, yes. Yeah, we love our students. But you know, we are humans and we have to survive to Adams believes entry level teachers in Denver should be paid at least $65,000 a year. If he could, he'd also like to cap class sizes at 15 or 20 kids rather than the 35 limit he says is currently the standard in Denver public schools. You, you think about like, what else could I do? What other jobs could I do? But I think in the end, what keeps me coming back? Year after year, the answer is the kids. Adams also tells me if he could, he would change the evaluation process for teachers. He says it can be a burden on them in Denver public schools. He also says a tangible way to support teachers is through the form of bond or mill levies when those come around. Plus, he would love to see more community members volunteering in schools so they could see what the needs are firsthand. Yeah. Live in Denver, Colette Bordelon, on Denver 7. Great to hear some real tangible solutions there uh, from him, Colette. Despite uh, the challenges, there are still young people eager to get into classrooms and have make a difference in kids' lives. The University of Northern Colorado in Greeley is holding a future teachers conference today. The goal is to get more highly qualified educators in our state. Aspiring teachers will get firsthand knowledge from experts. Various presentations from early childhood to culturally and linguistically diverse education, um, physical education, art, music education. When you see such diversity and you see such hope, um, it, it's, you know, all these young people just gathered in this place and you know that, you know, there's going to be some of them that are going to, they're going to be in the classrooms and they're going to make a huge impact. Yeah, and more than 300 students are attending the conference and hopefully many will become teachers. We want to hear from you. What do you think needs to be done to help our teachers and reduce those challenges? Email us at 360 at the Denver Channel .com.